this class and the next one we are going to talk about uh, location selection. Uh, this is a very important topic uh, that is because whenever you have a multinational or any company want to start this business it has to select a location. Now this location means that it has to locate a country, it has to locate a city and a place. Now this is a very very important decision. Uh, it is um, th that is because it depends, it has to be close to the markets, it has to be close to the resources and it should not have any problems uh, of this and it should not be too expensive for it to start the business. So, and this, uh, uh, this problem uh, is, uh, is an important one and it is very well studied. <coughs> but our objective here is to look at how after an introduction to the uh, location selection problem, how we can use the supply chain ecosystem framework for location selection. That is the objective of these two lectures and uh, we will start with this. Well, I will first start with the literature on uh, location selection and clusters, choice locations, how do you, how do you choose the locations. And uh, the location choice is national versus subnational. In other words, you have to choose choose a, a country first, and then a city in that country. Now, in countries like India, China, and so on, a, a country means it has several states. India has twenty eight states, seven unity, union territories, and so on. So, any location within the city belongs to the state subject. So, you have national versus state uh, uh, issues in the location and uh, in addition to that you need the investment climate of both the country as well as the city uh, to be congenial to your business. So, there are multiple criteria for evaluation of location. For example, if you are, if you are following the uh, supply chain ecosystem, you have to have resources which is human resources uh, close by, you should have power, water and so on. You should have industrial resources like clusters, agglomeration of various kinds of uh, resources that are needed for the business. You have to have uh, the approval of the government and the social groups and also the delivery, logistics, IT, infrastructure and all that. So, you have multiple criteria that are needed for the evaluation of location. So, it is not a single cost optimization that you need to do, but you have to locate this particular place depending on the multiple criteria. So, that is where we look at the ecosystem aware location analysis and what are the kinds of <coughs> issues that it will raise. And there is one uh, technique called AHP and its variations analytical hierarchy process. It is uh, basically uh, looks heuristic, but it is uh, 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 used very much in practice and that is used uh, uh, used very often whenever you have multi criteria, criteria decision making that is involved. Now, we will look at uh, this the for a biotech R and D in Asia. In other words, a country, a company wants to locate its biotech R and D lab in Asia. And it has three country choices China, Singapore, and India. And once they select India for a variety of reasons, they have choices like Bangalore, Hyderabad, Lucknow, and uh, Pune. So, wh which one do they select and how do they select? So, that and then we will conclude this lecture. So, this is it. This is a an important uh, aspect of uh, this. So, location, 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 a plant location and site selection guide by Marcel D. Mayer-Lear, uh, TIPS Technical Publishing in 2006. What he said was the location decision for a production facility is one of the most important decisions that a management faces. Well, obviously, I mean there are, there are faulty decisions that were made and management has to retreat and move to some other place. For example, the Tata Nano plant in Singur in West Bengal. 
and the purpose of the location study is to determine the area and the site in which the projected operation and investment can be carried out under optimal conditions with the best monetary return and with the least number of problems. So, I mean the, the issue is it's a very general statement, but uh, uh, any industrial location problem involves various kinds of steps. Uh, so, let's let's look at uh, this particular problem. And there is another uh, this one: the dynamics of industrial location, the factory, the form, and production system, by Roger Hatter, and it is a 1997 book. Industrial location decision making is highly complex process with multifaceted characteristics, including tangible and intangible elements that are very difficult to measure and evaluate. So, you can see but from the previous uh, statements that the, the location nation problem has it is not uh, it, ha it has measurements, but it has also subjective issues. How good is the government? Well, good very good and so on. How good is the city quality of life? So, you can you can uh, you can sometimes give a number on a scale of 1 to 8 or sometimes you cannot say you can say only very good very good uh, low high and so on. So, these are the kinds of things you you get into when you are making the industry location problem. So, that is where you require uh, the help of analytical hierarchy process or, or fuzzy HP and several other kinds of uh, techniques of that kind uh, to make the multi criterion model. So, if you look at the literature on location selection, there are what are called the location production models by Weber and Moser. These are also called center of clarity models and only framework that is ownership location and interna inter internalization framework and uh, we will look at that and agglomeration economies. These are clusters basically economies of scale and network effects. In other words, it is always good to locate your business in a where there is a an agglomeration. In other words, there is a group of companies belonging to your vertical and it is always you get lot of things network effects out of this. That is where you have clusters like auto clusters, biotech clusters and electronic clusters, apparel clusters and so on and as such special economic zones which basically are these, these are all zones where the government has all the infrastructure that is needed and also it will give shops for uh, import and export and so on. So, that, that these are all the uh, things where the SHJs have a conglomerate. For example, in India the software technology parks are basically uh, the special clusters of software companies where they have, uh, they have a variety of companies. Uh, both small and big in clustered in an area in various cities. And then we look at the investment climate as we said before a, the supply chain ecosystem basically has resources, institutions and delivery mechanisms which form the, uh, the investment climate and that also determines the, uh, uh, the, the location. And then there are location consultants so who are there who make big money in this. So, what are the location production models? They are Weber and Moses models and basically these models analyze the production behavior of the individual firm in relation to the local labor, land, transportation and telecommunication costs. So, you can you want to you want to basically locate it where their resources uh, are available and they are cheap. The objective is to choose a location where the weighted sum of the Euclidean distances from the plant to market and plant purchases its inputs and sell outputs. So, basically you want to locate the center of gravity of both the suppliers as well as the buyers. So, that you can you can you can basically you are you are almost in a in an optimal distance both uh, from buyers and suppliers. That is the Weber's model. The ownership location and uh, this one the Wally framework, the firm prefers FDI to trade and become an MNC multinational corporation if the firm possesses ownership advantages 
not available to other firms in terms of superior technology, firm size and brand name. In other words, when it enters a country, it should be the best that best large and should have a brand and the entry market offers location specific advantages, market size, cheap resources and infrastructure. Well, this is what the investment climate is about. You have the resources, you have of course the market size and the infrastructure, both delivery as well as uh, for uh, the people, uh, freight and people. Their internalization advantages of eliminating transaction and coordination costs associated with market interaction. So, here when you are talking to the suppliers and, and when you are talking to the uh, to the markets um, and so on, then there should not be too much of uh, transaction or coordination costs associated with it. So, the only framework is basically uh, looks an idealistic framework. It is a widely accepted model for location choice at the national level. There is nothing here to dispute of this. So, the firm should be the best within the region of cheap resources and high market size and best infrastructure. Then of course, there are clusters or choice uh, uh, economies. This is called agglomeration economies. Economies of agglomeration describe the benefits of the firms obtained when locating near to each other. What are the benefits when you are near to each other of the same in the same vertical. So, clustering of related firms create economies of scale and network effects which in turn lower the production cost and increase the market reach. Well, obviously, if uh, for example, uh, a set of uh, refineries or oil firms at the same place, well, if the or some other factories are the same place, you can have a common uh, a repair and maintenance site where uh, you know which can be shared which can be a shared service but it is you can have a cloud which can be a shared service so you can have transportation from the city which is a shared service and also in addition to that within the network within the vertical industry domain knowledge you can share the knowledge across this one so that's what uh, the the effects of clustering and the production costs are lower due to availability of specialized resources such as competing suppliers, skilled labor and infrastructure. And on the demand side, the informal externalities from the other firms and the reduction of the consumer search costs are beneficial for total market demand. So, since every firm is looking for the customers, every firm is looking for suppliers and for the suppliers also since there are several several firms inside in a cluster. So, there is a scale for both the supply and demand firms to make uh, uh, make connections with uh, the cluster firms. The clusters are for example, the clusters are geographical concentrations of interconnected companies, specialized suppliers, service providers and associated institutions in a particular vertical. If you take uh, the wine cluster in California, the auto cluster in India or some other clusters in China or apparel clusters in in, uh, uh, in the South, uh, China, South uh, Tamil Nadu. So, any of them have uh, specialized suppliers and they are all interconnected companies. They are service providers like for providing the logistics and other associated. Uh, if we have uh, uh, power looms, then there could be repair and other service providers and associated institutions like universities, training institutions and so on kind of belong into that vertical. Now, the proximity of the companies and institutions uh, fosters better coordination and trust lowering the transaction costs, minimizing inventory, importing costs and, and delays and so on. Because you know any service firm like logistics firm which is a truck or a train or or, or, uh, or a ship, what it can it has uh, the advantage of uh, scale uh, for running their business that is because there is a very uh, large number of companies doing within the business. And clusters allow companies to operate more productively 
in sourcing inputs, accessing information technology and human resources. So both the clusters for example this is uh, the uh, cluster of uh, 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 the California wine cluster. You have uh, this contains all the all the ecosystem parameters here. You have wineries, processing facilities, the growers, wine yards and the state and central government agencies. You have educational research, trade organizations and you have all the people who are making uh, the, the things for wine bottles and wine and you have a tourism cluster and a food cluster and you have uh, the this is the agriculture part of it. This is grape fertilizer pesticides, grape harvesting equipment and irrigation uh, technologies and this is the agriculture cluster. So you have the agriculture cluster, this is the wine yards, the wineries and all the other associated this one for export and so on. So this is one of the very famous uh, cluster names that came. California is now a significant player in the wine industry challenging Italy, France and other European countries. UC Davis helped with the new techniques of mechanical harvesting, drip irrigation and field crafting. So there are several advantages uh, to having these, uh, these clusters here. So you have uh, for example uh, the Indian auto clusters. Uh, uh, India has become uh, a small car hub. Uh, uh, in this and uh, the the small car hub uh, in this is the for example you have in Delhi the uh, near Delhi in north and you have uh, near Calcutta, Bombay and Chennai. These are the all the cluster elements of auto clusters. So Basically, if you want to look at a, a, any form relating to the auto cluster, I think where would you look at in one of these regions? So the reason being that you have interconnections with all this, you have all the infrastructure that is developed for these clusters already, you can use that infrastructure and uh, you need order to and you have a trained manpower and so on and also the culture. So you have the Indian automotive industry has, has grown uh, in clusters, uh, Manesar in north, uh, Pune in west, Chennai in south and Jamshedpur, Kolkata in the east and Indore in central India. Of course the, in central India there is uh, uh, in Madhya Pradesh uh, there are some plants here. So location advantages. Um, uh, such as infrastructure access to pool of educated workforce and supportive state government policies are some of the factors that play a role in attracting uh, the investments. So when you have this auto clusters or wine clusters or apparel clusters or electronic clusters, it is always advantageous to locate the firm towards that. When you locate your firm in such locations then of course there you have you have an advantage of uh, using all the facilities including the educated manpower and the training schools that they have already in those and uh, so there are special economic zones that come I mean India China has a lot of this every country almost has several special economic zones. Special economic zones are geographical areas uh, that has economic loss different from the rest of the country. So if you look at the rest of the country and the economic loss uh, in this uh, in the economic zone then there are they are basically different. How are they different? They are different because you know for example the infrastructure is very uh, is very good in a special economic zone. In other words the water power and other uh, facilities are all available and also there is transportation within the zone that is available and then there are trade laws that are this one once you manufacture get into this you need not have to pay import duties when you export you need not have to pay duties. So these are basically 
um, locations, but you employ people within the local people, but you can also sell locally, but you have to pay tax. So, these are special regions different from the country. The goal is to attract foreign investments. So, there are all kinds of uh, special economic zones in IT, uh, yes, uh, uh, in apparel, in, uh, in electronics. Uh, for example, in Chennai you have in electronics, in auto and so on. So, the SHZ have established in many countries, China, India, Jordan, Poland, Philippines, Russia, or North Korea and also United States, they have a uh, few SHZs. The Indian SHZs are not as, as effective as those in China, probably because they are not focused. For example, China's growth is attributed to the special economic zones that the government has created. But India is also, so I mean, India probably has created the special economic zones much before uh, 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 China did in 1968, but uh, it did not take off as much as this one. And I think uh, the success of special economic zones in India is not that very good. And then we look at the what is called the investment climate and, uh, and uh, other indices. You know, every country has an investment climate. If you look at the World Bank reports, World Bank reports talk about investment climate. Investment climate are the human resources, the, uh, the, the power, water and other resources, the infrastructure and the government laws, the business climate, business friendliness of the government and the quality of life. Because when an industry wants to start a business in any country, then their employees look for quality of life. So, the quality of life and ease of life and general education for children, all these factors are matter for the employees. So, that is where I think the investment climate has uh, an improvement. There are lots of, there are lots of reports uh, uh, under the World Economic Forum as well as World Bank and uh, UNCTAD and all that. And one is Global Competitiveness Report. Ranking depend on elements of the microeconomic environment. The quality of public institutions and the level of technological readiness and innovation. In other words, every year these reports are produced by the uh, top agencies. Uh, of course, in addition to the reports by lot of consulting companies like uh, McKinsey, PwC, uh, KPMG and others, they also produce reports on the investment climate and business friendliness of various countries. So, the global competitiveness report is, is one such and also global information technology report. This is a report, uh, uh, it is called Networked Readiness Index, NRI is a measure of the degree of preparation of the nation to participate and benefit from ICT developments. You know, information technology is fundamental for the growth of any industry. So, in other words, either the internet or email or uh, the use of, uh, uh, use of software packages like ERP and, uh, and other other this one and the trained manpower in this, it is very important for the, uh, for the country to benefit from, uh, from the industrialization. So, for this reason there is a global information technology report which measures how many people have internet connection and how many companies have, uh, have uh, are interconnected, how many transact their financial transactions with the bank by email and so on. There are several, several of these factors they take and this is a report that talks about this. I mean and there is a, what is called an investment climate which was defined in 2004 by the World Bank. And this defines the macroeconomic, economic, fiscal, monetary and exchange rate policies and political stability. Now, political stability becomes important, political elections even in democracies, the elections change the governments. 
one party goes off and another party comes in. So, and then there is a change of policies and all that and also the, the, uh, the monetary policy is exchange rate which is very volatile now. They change and regulatory framework entry and exit labor relations finance and taxation you know for example uh, the, the, the taxes to trade tax import and export and the items they keep changing every year or depending on uh, the, the economic conditions and so on. I mean some government sometimes liberalize, sometimes they turn product protectionist and so on. So, physical and financial infrastructure, power, transport, telecommunications, banking and finance these become important. Now, one of the things that is important is the, uh, the, the, uh, the capital. Now, for example, the inter interest rates of the on your borrowings in some country it is, countries it is low, in some countries it is high. And the tax cap, uh, the corporate tax is high in some countries and is low in some other countries. So, all these things matter because ultimately where, why do you want to locate your business in a foreign country? You want to make money. So, for that reason it is very important to look at the investment climate of this. So, there are various reports by various agencies. Some talk about logistics, there is a logistics uh, index, there is a connective connectedness index and there is the information technology index, there is a global competitiveness report and the uh, doing business with the country kind of reports and the investment climate reports and so on. So, what do these talk about? They basically are giving the, the business friendliness of a particular country, but rarely they do talk about the vertical <coughs> because if you are a company, you belong to a vertical, you are either healthcare, you are either auto, you are electronic or your uh, some other service, electrical power or manufacture of, uh, of healthcare equipment, whatever. So, you are in a particular vertical. So, what are the rules and regulations for that vertical? What are the clusters that are there in that vertical? Uh, what is the kind of train, uh, trained manpower you have in those verticals? And if you want land in some other place, what is the kind of land you can get in those places? These are, these are the basic issues that you have and that is where the investment climate comes into effect. So, there are lots of reports uh, this one, but the point I am making here is that these investment climate are country based. In other words, they give you one index, so 34 for India, 24 for China, this kind of range. Of course, it is a detailed analysis and they basically aggregate all this and then give you an index score. But our interest here is vertical based or product based. Why product based? Because suppose you are talking of oil and gas, then you need refineries, you need uh, ships to carry oil to, uh, and then later and petrol. You have all kinds of issues like that. If you are talking of electronics, then you have light products with uh, uh, with like microprocessors which are although they are light they are very expensive so you can airlift them. So, the weight to value ratio is important when you are trying to choose the mode of transport. So, if you, you may want to choose air, air transport, so air facilities become important if you Intel wants to locate its factory somewhere. So, the, although these, uh, these reports are done in a, in a global general uh, fashion, so our uh, analysis is for a particular vertical or a product. And most of these things are empirical and data driven. In other words, there is a lot of data that is collected by the World Bank and other agencies and they do uh, they do data analysis for using this. And of course, there are lots of location consultants. 
the location consultants or uh, support the whole location selection process starting from initial search till negotiations on investment subsidies and agreements on lands and buildings and so on. Now, of course, the location consultants charge a lot of money depending on the percentage of the investment that you have. If you are investing 400 crores, probably they will ask for a 5 percent or 6 percent of that as the fees of this. Multi-attribute evaluation of locations is usually done by assigning weights directly, multi-attribute value function, linear additive technique. There are several ways in which you have, you have multiple uh, parameters that need to be satisfied. You want to have very good resource, you want to have uh, low taxes, you want to have uh, high transportation and all that you want, yet you want the place that is cheap. Uh, in terms of the rents and so on. So, basically all this wish list need to be prepared and then it has to be with assigning weights and priorities to what you want. So, there are lots of popular location consultants like IBM, Buck consultants, DealTech, PwC, etc. I mean there are several of them in this. So, that is what uh, we, we talk about uh, the uh, how important is the, the location and there are lots of lot of it is a basically a literature survey of what we have. Now, when we are talking of the location choice, now let us define the problem of location choice. You have to basically choose the nation or the country where you want to locate your plant and then within the nation a subnational choice. That means it faces two kinds of location choice problems when it is doing foreign direct investment. The first choice is the country for investment. This is a complex decision subsumes with this decisions on the mode of entry and the industry of entry. The second one is the choice of the city or town in which you know, the chosen country to build and operate the subsidiary. This decision involves evaluation of alternate cities with respect to various location factors and negotiation with the host governments. So, you have to first choose a country and then choose a location within the country in a state and basically negotiate various SOPs for your company. So, the this is this is rarely an optimization problem. This is rarely an optimization problem and one has to use an iterative technique. So, the location decisions are for example, the mode of entry. Mode of entry could be a grain field investment that is you go start to buy a land, you build the, bring the equipment and start building the buildings and operate the equipment and so on. So, there is an installation time that is involved for the buildings, you have to acquire the land and sometimes the land acquisition could be a big problem. Or you can get into a joint venture with somebody who is already established that field and you can jointly make all the decisions and so on. So, the advantage of joint, joint decision making is if you are a foreigner, the other side is, an, uh, is, a, uh, is the local and he has the domain knowledge, he has the political connections and so on. So, joint venture is preferable in complicated cases. Industry of entry, the main line of business of a multinational enterprise or a diversification from the current business. So, you can have the label of a, of a particular big company, but you can you can talk the main line of business of the MNE or a diversification from the current. You know, if you are in healthcare, you could be healthcare instruments, you can be the hospitals and several other things you could do telemedicine or so I mean or otherwise uh, the tourism, medi medical tourism or something. So, basically there are several ways in which you can enter any particular industry. 
See so location decision, what are the types of firms? Single plant form. The problem is to find single location from a given set of potential locations. So, for example, you want to locate a country within the country, one of those options. And a vertical multi plant form, a form with multi plant production process and plans to locate each plant in different locations. And here the location choice is to choose the location for each plant simultaneously. In other words, for some reason it is a distributed uh, manufacturing site. And these are located in different parts and you want to simultaneously choose those, those spots. But horizontal multi plant a firm with the decentralized plant locations across the country. Each catering to local demands from the nearby plant. In other words, instead of having one single plant at the center of the country and supply to all corners of the country, that is one way of doing it. Another way is you can select all the eight corners of the city or four corners, northeast west, south and locate the plants there. The location choice problem in this case is similar to classical fiscal uh, uh, facility location problem like the center of gravity approach and so on. So, are you going to have a single form or are you going to have a vertical multi grant form or are you, are you moving uh, want to have same form in multiple locations in the same country. So, you want to decide about the country, about the locations uh, where it is located uh, right now. So, subnational location decision is MNC is interested in locating a drugs and pharmacy. Supposing uh, there is a drugs and pharmaceutical plant in one of the four locations Ahmedabad, Mumbai, Delhi and Hyderabad. And the location decision has the following steps. Evaluate the rank of four locations with respect to various attributes of the MNC form, level characteristics and objectives. Choose top two sites and negotiate with the state governments and go on the iterating. So, first of all, you have to choose the locations that will suit your purpose and then negotiate with the state governments for the SOPs it can give where in terms of taxes, in terms of facilities, in terms of free land whatever. So, you have to basically look at uh, these issues. And finally, the location decision problem has two components, evaluation of the locations and negotiation of the state government and simultaneous negotiation of MNC with all the state governments is also possible. In other words, if you find that two or three locations are, are equally good and what depends is, is on the on the shops that are get that the firm gets from the state, then one can go into the state government negotiate simultaneously. Of course, the factors that influence location decisions, what are the kinds of things that one needs to? Industry inputs like uh, for example, electricity, water and so on and blue collar workers, training institutes. Agglomeration and network effects, localization of economies measure economic diversity, Communication technology, number of days to get connections for various technology, telephone, wireless and so on and transport that is seaports, airports, railway stations and so on. And you are looking at laws and regulations that is the difficulty of interfacing with various government departments, labor, customs and excise, income tax, pollution control and so on and economic and financial issues, corporate income tax, import tax, export tax and so on and risk, political stability, intellectual property, friendliness of the government, 
conflicts with neighboring governments, communicable diseases, and so on. Living conditions, consumer price index, crime rate, real estate prices, and number of hospitals. So, third party services, legal advertisement, logistics, and so on. So, basically, if you want to write a wish list, I mean, you can always also classify them as resources, institutions, and uh, and delivery mechanisms. And but in real terms, these are all the kinds of facilities that one one needs uh, for making the location decisions. So, what is the industrial location problem? process. Identify the basic requirements and the critical factors of the location project. Shortlist and alternative locations that satisfy the mandatory critical factors. And identify M location factors to evaluate the N locations. So, you have say 3 locations 1, 2, 3 and what are the factors on which you want to evaluate this? You want to have power availability, human resource availability, clusters. So, you identify M location factors to evaluate the N locations and obtain information about the N locations for the M factors recurring tasks, non-recurring costs, market growth, return on investment, government efficiencies, political climate, etc. And rank L locations with respect to M location factors. So, what what you have here is the basically uh, this uh, the particular slide summarizes the location dynamics of location decision process. You have for example, location factors. What are the things that you are looking for? You have various alternate locations and these will be attributed for evaluation ranking and locations. And you could do using multi attribute decision analysis. And once you have the ranking of the locations, you can start negotiation with your companies. So, once you start negotiation with the companies, then with the host governments, you get an optimal location. So, sometimes you may get into multilateral this one and once you have the negotiated, what is that usually you negotiate for? You usually negotiate for free land or you negotiate for taxes, no taxes, no sales tax, no income tax, this kind of things you negotiate for some time and then get at the all the alternatives. So, what, what you have here basically is a scheme of evaluating the, uh, the location of uh, uh, any particular industry using this. Now, the, the issues are the following that when you are selecting the location, you have to first locate uh, the country and then afterwards you have to locate the state in which this is maintained. So, the for example, if in the biotech case, if you want to locate either look, you are looking at China. India and Singapore, then you you may want to uh, find rank order these in terms of the resources availability and the government regulations and, uh, and also the social groups and also the delivery mechanisms like clinical logistics and all that. So, once you have selected a particular country, then you go back to the city and do the same kind of analysis. So, in each time what is important is the investment climate. So, you are looking at the investment climate that is what it gets to. So, basically what we have done so far, 
yes we looked at the uh, the problem of location problem and looked at the ideas of what are the factors that you look at, at the in a uh, your what are the factors you are going to look at uh, in a holistic way but what we are going to do next is look at the ecosystem aware location analysis so so far uh, this is what we did was the literature survey and identification of the problem now before i go to the ecosystem aware location analysis let us see what are the disadvantages, what are the problems you will find in this. Now each time I am looking at whatever is the available literature either World Bank reports or this one, they are not vertical based, they are for the entire country. Some of the factors like the business friendliness of the country and the taxes, trade, tariffs and so on they basically are the same, they depend on the country, but there are some other factors which are vertically dependent. For example, if you have trained manpower, English speaking manpower, then you are more suitable for IT. But if you are starting an IT, uh, auto industry, then you require people trained in machining. And similarly, if you have the kind of resources that you require for IT or basically uh, internet and uh, transmission via various kinds of things, uh, uh, cyber uh, uh, internets and so on. But on the other hand, if you are transport, want to transport auto components, then you require either ships or trucks. So the kind of infrastructure that you need for each of these verticals is different. So, what is needed is you need a, 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 a system or a, a framework where it depends the location analysis is done both using the vertical and its properties and also, also the the location and its properties. So the location properties are what you are looking for are the resources and the government regulations and uh, uh, the delivery mechanisms. Whereas in the uh, supply chain itself if you have the clusters, if you are nearby clusters then in, in one country and you do not have these clusters in another country, then it becomes uh, automatic choice. So, what, what is needed is to, to look at uh, the ecosystem aware location analysis that is what we are going to do. So what we are going to do in the next lecture is to look at the ecosystem map, look at the general map of the ecosystem and look at the various kinds of parameters and define what is the uh, location analysis. And of course, there are multiple attributes here. You have to want to choose the resources, you want to choose the taxes, you want to choose the free trade, free trade agreements and so on, the countries to have these. So in all this, it becomes very important to look at the, the entire ecosystem parameters. That is what we are going to do in the next lecture. But uh, so this is the supply chain ecosystem based. Uh, hierarchical structuring that is what we are going to do uh, in the next lecture, we will stop here.